Hi, I'm Abby. And I'm Catty! And today we're going to be delving into the world of... Prokaryotic cells! Wow, really? Cool! Prokaryotic cells are known as bacteria. There are two types of cell, eukaryotic and prokaryotic, which are both very different and perform different functions. What makes up a prokaryotic cell, I hear you ask? <gasps> That's handy! Although the prokaryotic cell has no nucleolus, the DNA in the bacterial cell is confined to a nucleoid region, though it isn't confined by a membrane. In, in the nucleoid, there are circular strands of DNA, but no chromosomes. There are also ribosomes in the prokaryotic cells, which give the cytoplasm in the bacteria a grainy appearance in the electron micrographs. These ribosomes are smaller than ones in eukaryotic cells, however, they have a similar function in translating the genetic message in messenger RNA into the production of proteins. What you can't see on this diagram are nutrients and reserves, which may be stored in the cytoplasm of the cell in the form of lipids, polyphosphate, and, in some cases, sulfur or nitrogen. What can make some of this bacteria so nasty is another part of the cell which you can't see. The dreaded ENDOSPA! <laughs> These spores are highly resistant to drought. High temperature and other environmental hazards. Once these hazards are removed, the spores germinate to create a new population. And now onto the surface structure, starting on the outside and working our way in. All of the things mentioned before are contained within a capsule. So kind of like the casing around a kinder egg, only the toy has the ability. The capsule is made up of polysaccharides and sometimes proteins. It protects the bacterial cell. This capsule is often associated with pathogenic bacteria because it serves as a barrier against phagocytosis by white blood cells. The cell wall is in the next layer and it is made up of polysaccharides plus protein equals <laughs> peptidoglycan. The cell wall maintains the overall shape of the cell. Cell. The three main structures of bacteria are coccus, spherical, bacillus, water shaped, and spirulum. And spiral. However, there is one bacteria with no definite shape. <laughs> Which is called mycoplasma. The next layer, which is not on this diagram, is the outer membrane, which is a lipid bilayer found in gram-negative bacteria and is the sort of LPS of liposaccharide in these bacteria. LPS is toxic. It turns the immune system on. This is only in gram-negative bacteria, not gram-positive bacteria. The next layer is again only shown in gram-negative bacteria and is called periplasmic space. In this space, there would be enzymes and other proteins that help digest and move nutrients into the shell. So... <laughs> Plasma membrane is the next layer, and is in gram-positive and negative bacteria. It is the furthermost in layer and is a lipid bilayer, much like the plasma membrane of other cells. There are many proteins moving within and upon This layer that are primarily responsible for the transport of ions, nutrients and waste across the membrane. Next, onto the appendages or appendages, which the bacteria may have. First are the pilus, located here. Which are tiny, hollow, hair-like structures made of protein which allow the bacteria to hook 
welcome to other cells. The other appendage is flagella, which gives the other bacteria its mobility. They rotate like the propeller of a boat, powered by the motor located just under the cytoplasmic membrane. To help it speedy along to destroy other cells, bacteria can have one, a few, or many flagella in different positions on the cell. But how are prokaryotic cells different from eukaryotic cells? Let's find out with Abby. Prokaryotic cells have no true nucleus, only a diffuse area of nuclear material. Eukaryotic cells have a distinct nucleus within a nuclear envelope. Prokaryotic cells have circular strands of DNA, but no chromosomes. Eukaryotic cells do have chromosomes where their DNA is located. Prokaryotic cells have no membrane-bound organelles. <laughs> Eukaryotic cells do have membrane-bounded organelles such as mitochondria. Prokaryotic cells have no chloroplasts, only photosynthetic regions in some bacteria. Eukaryotic cells have chloroplasts present in plants and algae. A prokaryotic's ribosomes are smaller. Eukaryotic ones are larger. Cholera kills over 120,000 people every year. <gasps> the agent which causes the disease is a curved, rod-shaped bacterium called virocholery. Virocholery is transmitted by the ingestion of water. <laughs> or more rarely, in food. It has been contaminated with fecal material containing the pathogen. Almost all of the Vibrio cholerae ingested by humans are killed by the acidic conditions in the stomach. However, a few may survive, particularly if the pH is above 4.5. When the surviving bacteria reach the small intestine, they use their flagella to propel themselves like a corkscrew through the mucus lining of the intestinal wall. Next, they produce a toxic protein. This protein has two parts. One part binds to the specific carbohydrate receptors on the cell surface membrane. Mm. However, this is only on epithelial cells of the small intestine, as these have specific receptors. The other toxic part, this bit, enters the epithelial cells. This causes the ion channels of the cell surface membrane to open so that the chloride ions that are normally contained within epithelial cells flood into the lumen of the intestine. The loss of chloride ions from the epithelial cell raises the water potential while the increase of chloride ions in the lumen lowers its water potential. So water flows from the cells, from the cells into the lumen. And this establishes a water potential gradient that causes water to move by osmosis from the blood and other tissues into the intestine. Just imagine that's on the stomach. Stomach. It's the loss of water from this blood and other tissues into the intestine that causes the symptoms of cholera, aka diarrhea dehydration. Diarrhea dehydration. And that's the end of Prokaryotic Cells! Oh. Ah. You, you can move, just make sure you go back to the same room.